Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brew, and welcome to episode 82 of Beer and Nuts, the podcast. Mate, we are here in Vermont, in Stowe. I have Mark, who's the head cider maker and owner, and Austin, head of production at Stowe Cider. Gentlemen, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Really Thanks. appreciate it. So y'all wondering why the hell are we at a cider? Cidery. We just discussed this, and I messed it up straight away. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we were talking on Instagram like last week, a week, a couple weeks ago? A couple weeks ago now. And, um, you know, we're trying to, like, I w- at first I was I wasn't sure if it would fit, but, you know, episode 70 was with Rosewood in Niagara, a winery, and I was like, anything in Vermont is uh, interesting to me. Um, you know, we got along. I liked your branding, sorry. Like, I really like, I thought, you know what, let's do it. And we tried to bring a few brewers, but it didn't work out. I think it's for the better because uh, we can just focus on the cider. And as you can see here, we have a fair volume of uh, Vermont beer. We got into. plenty of our favorite beers, always. So we're not scared at all. Um, first of all, what is this all about here? This <laughs> bad boy. Started you out hot right out of the gate. That's our bourbon barrel aged cider. <laughs> <laughs> it's called our Smuggler's Reserve. All right. So you guys said you've driven through uh, Smuggler's Notch before. Yes. And so right on the other What's side of the notch, Smuggler's. Smuggler's Notch. Yeah. Ah. And oh. uh, yeah, famous throughout Prohibition, they were smuggling booze. Before that, slaves. That you name it, and anything's gone through there from here to Canada. No way. So, all right. Uh, there's a distillery there, so we use right. their barrels to, to age. That is amazing. That is the last thing I would have associated with cider. Get Cheers. it, in Cheers, Luck. Cheers. Right. Oh wow, that's not what I expected. <laughs> it just it just works. Like, it's got that smoky, oaky, kind of like um, typical bourbon. Kind of like bourbon is lingering a bit, I think, because it's generally bourbon ba- uh, bourbon barrel aged beers would be on the sort of heavier side. So it kind of blends in, whereas this is like, it sits really nicely. Yeah, it's still light, uh, yeah. eight and a half percent. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, don't drive after this. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. That's fantastic. Um, so what I like to start with generally is your stories. Like how did we, how did you guys end up here? And then a story of maybe the, the cidery, I want to say brewery itself. So whoever wants to start. Mark. Yeah, so I'll kick it <laughs> off. Uh, we've been around since 2013. Uh, started off as a small tasting room, doing very small batches, uh, farmhouse style, unfiltered. And focus- what was, so, sorry to interrupt, what the farmhouse style in the, in the realm of cider mean? Yeah, so I mean, we would do a lot of more, you know, preservative free, you know, some wild ferments, more naturally fermenting, not okay. not filtering, uh, okay. as would be kind of a farmhouse style. Gotcha. Um, you know, letting you know Mother Earth and nature take its course. Fantastic. Uh, we still do that from time to time, but our consumers have grown to appreciate the, the filtered product and the consistency yeah. you know that comes with it absolutely sorry continue i apologize no that's all right and uh so again yeah we started off as a, a small tasting room was just doing some production uh more on the the hobby side to begin with and as soon as we started distributing we realized you know there was a demand for that you know we live here in vermont definitely great apple country mm-hmm. um you know they grow everywhere i live on apple blossom lane for example <laughs> Um, and that's not by coincidence. So we have a lot of great apples here, and it's just taking a natural resource. And so not only was it, you know, a fun hobby, it was, you know, something that, um, you know, people enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. So you just were – how did you get into actually making cider? You know, a good change of pace. Uh, I was never any good at making beer. Okay. Uh, I gave it a lot of uh, a lot of effort, a lot of try. Like uh, homebrew? Yeah, homebrew. Yep. I lived out in Colorado for about 10 years, nice. uh, working very closely with friends who had breweries out there. And, uh, you know, I'd go in and, and uh, help them out, and we'd work after, you know, after hours, try to make our own beers. And uh, they wouldn't let me do much other than drink, <laughs> so <laughs> I hey. figured out pretty quick. <laughs> but, you know, if you take <coughs> apple cider that's not alcoholic, and put it outside, it naturally ferments and turns to alcohol. That I right. can do. Yeah. <laughs> That's for real? Yeah. Like yeah. it's just wild fermentation similar to like a yeah, cool there, ship or something? There's, yeah, there's cideries that are born on that uh, philosophy. And especially Amazing. if you go abroad to the UK <coughs> or Spain, uh, a lot of wild fermented ciders out there. Amazing. Didn't even really think that would be a thing. Yeah. But I guess it makes sense. It's and nature. Then if, you know, just you got to cut it at the right time because if you miss it, it turns to vinegar. When you say cut it, what does that mean? Well, just stop the fermentation. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. 
So I'm going to keep asking you really stupid questions. That's just, fine. Um, like I said, I don't know much about cider, and I was, I'm going to assume that our listeners and viewers don't really know a ton either, so I just want to break it down, so excuse me for that. Well, I would say there are no such things as stupid questions, but I'm not going to be a PC. There are. <laughs> there, there are no, no, yeah. It's all right if you don't know. It's all right if you don't know. I'm going to be honest. We're here to educate. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Um, okay, sick. So you started in Colorado and then moved back here? Yep. So back here, we've been in business for five years. Uh, recently, we just moved into this facility. I nice. uh, try to keep up with demand. As you can see, we've got some larger tanks. We actually have floor drains, a loading dock. Um, you know, the joke. tanks that you kind of see behind us here was our original capacity in 2,000 square feet. Right. Uh, and now that's what, 20 square feet? Okay. So it's pretty serious. Yeah. How big is this one? Right now, there's 5,800 gallons in there. 5,800 gallons. Do you know what that is in barrels? Uh, that would be about 150 or so. We work, we, we work at, yeah. we work in uh, gallonage in the cider industry. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> but, you know, when it gets delivered, we use dairy tanker trucks. So if you see an oil truck or a dairy tanker truck, you know, driving down the road, typically, you know, that volume is what we receive in right. juice. So you don't press the juice here? We don't, no. Okay. I mean, we don't have an orchard, so we work with local orchards around Vermont and then upstate New York. Um, all of our apples come within 150 miles, and then we okay. work with a local mill down the road about five miles from here who presses the fruit. You know, those two things, are they're separate businesses. It's a lot right. of work, um, a lot of regulation, uh, and so we let them do what they're good at. And, you know, we'll you do take what, their raw product yep. and make it from there. Um, okay, six. So this place opened five years ago, and this was yourself. You had partners, or yes. Yeah, so there's a we got a couple of business partners. They're actually moving to Hawaii here pretty soon. So good for them. Um, on to the next uh, next adventure. Are they sticking around as investors, or are they? Yep, uh, yep. Yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna stay partners, uh, good friends, but they're you know ready for for the next for adventure. Change. Yeah. So they were out in Hawaii for a long time, and uh, you know going back to the beach. <laughs> I can see why. This never-ending winter thing is uh, getting pretty hot. Unbelievable. <laughs> and there's more snow here, I thought, because Montreal sucks, too, because further north, as far as, like, winter never-ending. And I came down here, and I guess because it's mountains, so there's just way more snow. Like, most of it's kind of, like, melted, so you guys probably cop it even longer than we do. Yeah. And this is a ski town, right? So is a ski town, is that correct? It is, yeah. but, you know, they closed last week, so we're done. We're, oh, nice. We're over it. So just waiting we're, for it to go. Yeah, we're over it. Apple season. Yeah. Um, anything else to add to your side? That's all I got. That's right it? Now. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> we got a lot of time. <laughs> we, oh, we got plenty of time. Uh, brother, tell us about it. Uh, as far as getting into cider making, um, I made whatever I could in college to get free or cheap booze with my buddies in Fair. the house that I was living at. That's so common. I understand. Um, and made a terrible, terrible product. Knew nothing about the process. Knew nothing about the science. Was just going to save money and make as strong as possible yeah <laughs> uh, just to get that get you there and I knew a friend who was here actually doing some of the designs who brought me in and I started directly from the bottom of the company and just worked, worked your way up worked my way up been here for a while now and learned more about the process of making cider learn more about the science and nice. here we are here we are what's the production manager do or head of production, like what does that actually entail? Uh, a lot of shipping logistics, making sure okay. stuff gets done on a daily basis. Keeping people in sure line. Making sure the cider gets made or... Okay. Do you keep mark in line? Is that what's up? No, I do not keep mark in line. <laughs> Nobody can. Nobody, Nobody, can. Nobody can. He's wild. Rogue asset. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Don't let him be modest, though. He's also running the canning line. He's making the cider. Um, we're a small team here. So, yeah. you know, we... We work together. There's only six of us right now. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. That's pretty solid. We're wearing a lot of hats here. <laughs> hey, it's kind of the best way, right? Yeah. It's kind of, you get your hands dirty in every little sort of part. I'm sure you learn, like, way more I mean, I'm the, the business. big in learning from experience, and I can't tell you how much I've learned in just the past almost three years. Damn. That's sick, boys. I love it. Um, so, in the interest, not of time, because we do have plenty, do you want us, should we, like, maybe just slowly sort of... Because I think we should focus probably on the ciders first. Yeah. And sort of speak about the different products. We'll just crack one over you know, and just it, keep yapping. Exactly. So and you, you take your pick. We can just start right to left. And yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, this is typically the way that I would do it. And, you know, cider's a great way to start any night. Don't get me wrong. I love beer. Um, you know, beers can get heavy. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get over there. Yes. To some of that deliciousness. But what 
is the same ABV as a lot of these uh, beers. It goes down very smooth, very light, especially this first one we're going to try. This is our high and dry. Okay. Um, some may say it's our flagship, so it was our original traditional farmhouse style that we made. Okay. And, uh, you know, we've, we've since kind of refined a little bit and... Um, use the filtration process, which gives us a little bit more stability. It gives it that light, bright color that you see in the glass. Okay. Um, the only ingredient here is apples. Excuse okay. Me. So just apples. Uh, yeah. And, um, how? Thank you, sir. How is this one fermented? Then is it this wild, or is this like added to? Yeah. So we use a, a white wine or champagne style yeast. It's a very strong fermenter. It's going to give it that light, crisp taste that you get it definitely makes sure that the fermentation always ends um and it and it kind of brings it to a white wine side versus the beer side for this one i was gonna say even just a the nose there is like total white wine yeah all right cheers guys sure cheers also no preservatives no no preservatives no residual sugars left so all the natural sugars in this is completely fermented out giving you the higher alcohol content right what what is the abv in this so this one's so six and a half six and a half yep. Jesus Christ. it tastes like apple juice man yeah it's crazy yeah and so this one you know from time to time is going to be uh varying a little bit more just because there are no preservatives uh so we don't control it with the other ones a preservative is going to stop any fermentation uh it's going to control any of the bacterial <clears throat> growth that could go on so this one right. you know we get i don't know 100 Plus different vintages every year because every press is different. A lot of vineyards yeah, and wineries are using one harvest and one press of the same fruit. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, you know, from day to day, month to month, and season to season, it changes. Uh, so, you know, the high and dry you get today might not be the high and dry you get next week. It's right. always banging. But, okay. um, <laughs> you know, there are going to be some slight variants. Right. Is, is that one of the main challenges of, sort of cider making as far as keeping the consistency that maybe like, you know, you can do that a bit more in beer and perhaps through the year for sure. It definitely yeah. changes as far as what blend we can get. Right. Um, so when you say what blend, you mean the different types of apples, different types of apples okay. that we get. I mean, from, we like to call it what an orchard mix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but all of our it's sugar great. content and pH levels stay the, like relatively the same. Uh, every delivery but you're never getting a, the same mixture of levels as far as percentages uh, of different types of apples right and okay. say in the fall you can you have a much more variety of apples that you can get and then come late summer especially here we're very limited mainly Macintosh and right. Macintosh heavy yeah, so we're always working hard. We're trying to, as Austin said, trying to balance out the sugar content and the pH. So okay. if you know anything about making beer, which I'm sure a lot of the listeners do, you know you need a specific sugar content, your gravity, to finish with a consistent ABV. Right. And so if we get low sugar apples, we end up with lower ABV. If we get higher sugar apples, we end up with high ABV. Mm. Um, and so on the other side is the pH or acidity. That gives it that sharp bite. You know, if you think Granny Smith... Um, you know, or some of those apples that get you right in the back of the mouth. That's yeah. because of the acid. Whereas, you know, some of the sweeter fruit, you know, like a honey crisp, for example, is just going to be, you know, a little bit more sweet with less bite. So you want to balance it out. And the pH is also what keeps the uh, the shelf life. Right. What would the shelf life be then, um, in general, for a no preservative cider? You know, is it similar to like a hoppy IPA or something where it's like, you know, two to four weeks or something? No, it's not going to be with this because we, we, we do filter the product, so that helps tremendously. We use a cross-flow filter, which removes and strips really all the organics. Um, you know, 99.9% of yeast or bacteria does not get through there, so it shouldn't be changing as quickly. If you keep it cold... Um, without a lot of temperature fluctuation, um, you know, we, we drink stuff that's years old at this point, just like oh, wine. Right. You might see some, some uh, changes over the months, but that doesn't mean that it goes bad. Interesting. Okay, so that's a big key difference then because like an IPA, I guess it wouldn't be bad, but it kind of loses the, 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 I don't know, the essence of what it is. Mm-hmm. Like I know particularly as like, I say Hedy and stuff, like I know John Kimmich likes it three months old. That's his thing. I don't like it more than three to four weeks personally Mm -hmm. I just changes too much for me and like other IPAs I know some of them literally like a week otherwise it's like uh, you got stone best buy right that's an example you know yeah best before or best after whatever yep 
Um, no, totally. Or drink. What is this? Enjoy by. Enjoy, Enjoy by. by. There you awesome. go. Um, honestly, this is fantastic. Like this is like we're big into wine, so like this just remind me of uh, like I smashed through that, and I'm a real, kind of a slow drinker. Like that was phenomenal. That was so refreshing. I'm, I'd be tempted to say it's the best cider I've had, but we're just starting, so I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I'm looking forward to jump, it. Don't blow your mind too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, you can re up and get get started all over again. Don't worry, reload, bro. There we go. Let's let's get the greenie going. Yeah, let's, next get, guy. let's Sorry, get greenie going. going. Um, another thing I really appreciate about your branding, we speak about it often on the podcast or in little things. I really like we own a social media agency, as we always say. So we're really into branding. And what I like about what you guys have done, you've taken the bold, strong, single colors in a consistent um, look, and use that across the thing no worries. and I really I think that really works cheers man so, um, I think that's super sick because that'll stand out on a shelf if you have three of those together well that's what we call that does, yeah too. we call that the billboard effect yeah, yeah. What? Shh, billboard effect right. uh, but yeah we, yeah we try to always encourage that because if you have two SKUs even if one is quote better or sells better you know two of them next to each other just like they sell more oh hell yeah I think I'm just looking at it from this side I'm like oh man it's just like it's, it's, I'm attracted to that specific side because of that it's very cool uh, what is this one, man? Uh, so this is going to be the tip top. Uh, it is a it's a semi dry cider. So semi dry. Yeah, more of a common style cider. Uh, you know, right in the middle between dry and sweet. And that would be based on what apples have been used. Which apples have been used, right? Uh, cool yes. Yeah. I mean, depending on the, you mean the flavor of it, or uh, I guess the difference. Once again, going back to real basics, the difference, like say, on the can there, the super dry versus semi dry. What would be so the difference there? Uh, based on the sweetness level for us, um, I, don't know, I don't have a can in front of me. But like our high end dry is, if you can pull that out, is completely on the front end of the schedule. Oh, wow, that's so spectrum. different. Spectrum, so it's completely dry. So we've got like a dryness scale, no either. sugar. Oh wow! So we say super dry, and then sweet. You won't find anything sweet um, on our scale. So this is significantly sweeter than. Uh, it, it significantly might not be the right way. It is, but. especially. Uh, Back to back, but if you yeah. want to compare that to, say, a commercial cider or some of the ciders that are more well known, yep. not knocking them, there's nothing against that, but it's probably <clears throat> a third of the sugar content. You know, right. so something like this is going to have about 10 grams of sugar. This is sugar free, so you've gone from zero uh, to 10, which seems like zero to 60, but then if you were to get some of the, you know, maybe more mass market or something that's a sweet cider. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get up to 30 grams of sugar per, per serving in one of those. That's fascinating. Um, let's do the safety meeting. Okay. Like. So <coughs> that's not a, 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 you know, we don't say that in Canada. Like I don't, I've never heard anyone say that. Hey, we're having a safety meeting. <laughs> oh yeah. So for those who don't know what it is, I guess it's just code for smoking weed. Like, <laughs> like I, I had like all my, I got friends in Michigan who said it all the time. And I always sort of one, I think he showed me what I'm like, ah, cause we didn't even say it in Australia either. So I was sort of fascinated, and I like that a lot, and I guess that plays into where we're going next. So this is very relevant to today. This is very relevant to today. It's a, a little tongue-in-cheek, if you will. I love it. If you read the side of the can, well, I'll let you read the side of the can. Okay. You can just read from the top. Okay, so this is one of a kind and delightfully hoppy. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. But we know that you know that we know. Stay safe, friends. For best results, enjoy the cider in the spirit of Vermont, cold and in good company. I love it. So if you know, you know. You know. You say, and you get so many people in here that are from you know the hard hat industry, and they crack up. So oh, safety meeting. I've you know got I've got one of those like, every I single day. Every, you know, you're like yeah. Two p.m. Yeah. <laughs> people go hot. So this is dry hop with galaxy and citra. So this is coming into kind of beer esque territory. Now is dry hopping cider a regular thing, or is that something that you guys have are doing that's a little zany as the kids say you know i think maybe originally years back there weren't many you know now you're going to find it more common um you know from for this we kind of deviate from maybe say some of the local infusion stuff because we go you know all the way out to the pacific northwest or australia to get our hops we don't, yeah, you straight. know and you know we sacrifice that local factor for a kick-ass cider Oh yeah. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, I love hops from the Northeast, but they don't complement, you know, the apple the way that these, you know, kind of uh, fruitier and citrusy. Like the tropical, yeah, the tropical kind of joints. Joints. Yep, exactly. Right. This smells like it's. It's got a very interesting like off top. It's kind of like it's just yeah, the straight sort of like the tropical, but it's got the apple in there as well. It's kind of like is the, the the different thing that's throwing me off. 
Oh wow, that is so interesting. That's great. Six five as well. Six five as well. Six five is brilliant. Such an interesting like blend of worlds. So is dry hopping? Is that a thing? Like, do people do it? Do like other cider cideries? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I think a lot of them are, are dry hopped, and you know, what we battle with. With making a hop cider is that it has hops, right? A lot of our consumers are gluten-free or they drink cider because they don't care for beer. Mm. And, um, you know, they're worried that they're not going to like the safety meeting or a dry hop cider because it's going to taste like beer. So we're constantly educating them on the fact that... It doesn't taste like beer. It doesn't taste like beer. It might smell a little bit like some IPAs out there, but Mm. it doesn't taste like it. It is gluten-free, people. Uh, (laughs) It's just apples. (laughs) Right? It's just apples and hops, which are flowers. Um, and so they're it's worried, vegan, probably. You know, and it, 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 it's vegan. It's, it's, well, it's, there you yeah, go. Yeah, what vegan. do you need? Exactly. Everything box um, is tinted. You know, and in, in in my mind, and you know, Austin might uh, think differently or the same. Is you know, you get some Sauvignon Blanc characteristics from it as well. So okay. it's actually, I think, a little bit more in that direction than it is in a beer. Hundred percent agreed. I've never been much of a beer drinker and mainly because of the hops and the bitterness that comes from hops. Right. So when I started making and drinking safety meeting and I was pitching it to my friends or people at Brewfest that I was working, the biggest thing that I would, if anyone came up to me, was like, oh, well, I don't like hops. It's like, all right, well, come here because I don't either. And this Try is this. And every single one of them is like, oh, my God. What is this? This is unbelievable. Yeah. And the same way goes in the opposite direction. Like, my dad is a huge beer guy. And he's always been like, man, I don't want cider. I don't drink cider. <laughs> he's like Boston roots. Like, right, right. Hard ass. <laughs> and when I would bring him safety meeting, he, he like kind of liked all of our other ciders. And he flipped out yeah. when I gave him a safety meeting. He's like, this, what? he calls it the gateway cider. Or gateway cider to all of his <laughs> buddies and just like slings it to everybody and he's converting all his beer drinking buddies to cider and now they've made their way from safety meeting to tips up and now they all drink amazing so. it is that, and it's very interesting I never thought of it about that like gateway cider because I've never even been remotely interested I used I vomited off Strongbow when I was like 18 <laughs> yeah and you know like sometimes you puke off something and then you're just done well that's it the biggest like, thing is like our their like high and dry and tips up is so different from all the other ciders that have completely dominated the industry right. forever. Right. So this is, and I, I guess I haven't drunk any of that stuff literally for like damn near twenty years. So I'm sort of I went to Citizen Cider maybe last summer, like close to a year ago, um, and that was my first kind of like exposure to um, craft cider, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't get. You know, I didn't have you guys here to talk me through it type of thing. So I didn't really know what I was drinking. I didn't really understand what was going on or what the flavors were and maybe didn't appreciate it. So I wasn't really sure how I felt about it. I didn't dislike it, but I wasn't like, this is amazing just because I didn't get it. So um, I can definitely see that this would be a gateway cider to get beer guys into it. I just never, a lot of other beer friends have told me like, oh man, you got to, like friends from the UK. Yeah. It's huge out there. Huge. They have like cider festivals and stuff. Yeah. And dude's like, oh man, you gotta do it. Man, but there's like, look how many beers there are. Like, I'm busy. Like, I'm busy. <laughs> I got yeah. stuff to do. Like, but then, I don't know, now I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. Like, this is actually some stuff that you're right, very much in the wine world. If you like wine at all, like, this is completely up that alley. Yep. Um, this is really solid. And I mean, it, let's be honest, it's almost like cheating. You know, we use Galaxy and Citra. So <laughs> yeah, how can you go wrong? Hard to mess those yeah. Through, right. It's good because the galaxy is not like overwhelming. Um, galaxy usually just like overpowers everything, and this is like nicely balanced. Maybe do you use less galaxy than citra? Yeah, you know we try to balance it out to make nice. sure that some of the citrus is coming through as well. Because citra is also quite an overpowering hop, but I think if you put them together, generally galaxy would just bump everything else. Yeah, and you know, and, each other pretty well. yeah. And if you got if you got the ratios right, I guess. Yeah. Yep, and you know we, we have to be very tight about how long it is dry hopping because you know profiles do change, and as Austin mentioned. We don't boil the hops, um, and so you're not getting really any of that bitterness. But right, if you leave, if you leave them too long, uh, you know the alcohol from the base cider will start to you know bring some of that bitterness out. So it's really a delicate balance to make sure right. how long it's in there and when you pull it. Interesting, guys. This has been a pleasure. Um, where can we find you guys online? 
Tell the children. Well, StowCenter.com. Uh, hopefully getting an overhaul here pretty soon. Can't uh, wait. Uh, we're, we're hiring for that. But uh, StowCenter, you're going to find out Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, our website. Is still StowCenter everywhere on social? We are. Easy. Are you guys personally on at all where they, where they can hit you up that you'd like to let them know about? Or you want to keep that on the low? I, I don't have any Facebook. I did recently just start with an Instagram because I think the whole picture story is pretty cool. I'm Cider Whisperer. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to hit you up. <laughs> Let's be real. Come to Stowe. Come. Uh, like, really? I couldn't actually, like, all bullshit aside, like, this is one of the, my favorite places in, uh, in Vermont. There's so much good stuff here. Like, breweries, cideries, wineries, restaurants, like, everything. And, and mountains, like... What more do you need? It's just beautiful. Just drive around for a bit. Mountain biking, skiing, food, beer. You kind of covered. Like, and now we got cider. And now you got cider and it's fire. Um, guys, thank you very much for having me. Genuinely appreciate it. You're a gentleman. Thanks both for coming of you. out. Appreciate thank it. You. Yeah, thank if you. If you guys enjoyed out. the episode, smash that big fat thumbs up on YouTube there. Hit subscribe below. Thank you, Mark, for helping me out. Hit subscribe. Hit that, uh, uh, what's the other thing? Notification bell because you need to know when we drop the new fire. Follow us on social media at BAOS Podcast and check out the long form audio where I talk to very attractive gentlemen like these two men right here. And uh, subscribe, review, and rate us on iTunes, specifically or Apple Podcasts because that is where the children are at. That is it, guys. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Get in ya. Cheers. 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 Cheers.